Hello and welcome to My Retro Watches. This is the case restoration video for the 7025 uh, giveaway series. Uh, sorry it's taken so long to get around to doing this video, but I've had a few of the projects on that sort of uh, occupied my time, should we say. So what you can see in front of you is some of the things that we're going to be using. There are more products as well, dare I say it, depending. The problem you've got with um, trying to do case restoration is until you start it, you don't really know what you're going to need. Uh, I'm going to use everything using my uh, Dremel type tool. This is a draper, just a rotary tool. Uh, I feel as much as I've got a, a polishing machine, it's going to help me much better than that. Uh, most of you guys that might want to attempt this are going to have a machine like that. So for the demonstration purposes uh, and to get you sort of into how to do these sort of things, I thought I'd demonstrate uh, using all the equipment uh, that you can on those. Um, so, well, let me just also talk about what we've got here. So these are uh, abrasive sticks. Um, they come in all different sorts of grades from quite coarse to really, really, really fine. Uh, and it's basically just wet and dry. So it's just silicon carbide paper stuck to the stick. Uh, I've also got uh, many, many different grades of paper here, 800 grit, 400. Uh, I've got a 320, I've got a 1500. I use a lot more of the paper than I do the sticks. The sticks can, basically you'll be using a stick to sort of go along like this. Uh, I've got them out for demonstration purposes. I don't really think I'll be using the sticks on this particular one. And then over here, we have some more. This is another type of abrasive, and it's a uh, sponge backed. And this is acts. It's it's supposed to be coarse, but it acts really really fine. So it acts about fifteen hundred grit, and is quite good for nice round parts like this. Uh, then lastly, we've got. A lot of you guys would know it as Scotch Bright, um, but that's a trade name, so I shouldn't really be using it. Abrasive uh, hand pads, and I've got the maroon in this. This is from a company called Merca, and the maroon is very fine. The grey is ultra fine, and this is a completely different product to theirs, which is super fine. I think this comes in at about three thousand two hundred grit, so it's practically the last thing I use before I start polishing. Um, so I'll sort of. As I go through it, I'll show you the, the products we're going to use. Oh, incidentally, I've got this. Uh, this is a thermal tape. So it's a really, really good tape um, that uh, doesn't react to heat and is very good for masking off. So on this case, I guess I should show you now, really, uh, all this top here and these sides and the lugs are all a brushed finish. And uh, typically with Seacoat, they're all a high polish on the sides and on these sort of side pieces also here. So when we come to polish all of this, we're going to want to be protecting this area and that thermal tape is absolutely ideal. Uh, I'm going to start with actually putting the brush in on the top. It's a very, very simple process to do. Um, and what I tend to do is put that in first and then work on the sides for a while. When, when I come to polish them, I polish them all up and then I tend to just do the brushing again at the end, just ever so slightly to get it to how I want it to be, as perfect as it can be. So without further ado, I will um, take all this away and get set up to do the brush finish on the top of this. So what I've got here is a uh, a steel block. Um, this has been surface ground so it's nice and flat and it's an ideal thing to basically rub against and we have a coarse grit. So I'm using 320, it's the coarsest grit I've got and I'm just literally going to wrap that around that block uh, as tight as I can get it really. And the idea is, is to move the case back and forth slowly and then you can turn it. I'm trying to see if you can see that. So when you come to do the lugs, you want to sort of come up like that. Um, brush finish is quite 
subjective, I think, really. Of course, it gives you a more of a sort of a, a ground finish. You can come down the grits and it just becomes smoother and smoother. Um, you can use the Scotch Bright as well, and that just makes it all look matte rather than a, a sort of machined finish of any description. Uh, I want to start fairly coarse because some of these marks, it doesn't come across on camera very well, might be uh, quite deep, so we want to also get rid of them. So take a note of how it looks now. And as you can see, I'm just going to drag that and I'm going to curl it up at the ends. Show you that again. And by going on a flat surface, you know it's taking off even metal with the pressure you're taking. I've also used sometimes at the end like a rubberized block, but that's got a bit too much giving it for the start. So right now we're not really seeing too much because what you also find is the cases aren't exactly um, nice and flat. So the people who don't like restoring cases, well, one, you shouldn't be watching this video. Uh, and if you are, then this is the bit you probably want to look away because it, uh, it doesn't sound nice. And I guess on, you know, higher end watches like Amigos and stuff that this would be complete sacrilege. But on a, on a Seiko, you know, it's only going to improve things. So already we are getting a better finish. You can see it more down here in the light. I'm just trying to see if the camera would focus on it. Now I will need to do that quite some time, back and forth, until I'm completely happy with it. So rather than make this video like an hour long video, I will get this done as best I can or how I think it is. I'll show you it and then we'll move on to the next part. Okay, I've just been doing it for another just two minutes or so, and it's starting to, to come along. I'm trying to see if you can see it in the light here. Um, the problem is we've got quite a deep scratch in this area and a little bit more over here, but we'll continue to go. Uh, I just thought I'd show you that only after just a few minutes, this is the sort of results that you get. Uh, incidentally, with the paper, um, the more you use it, uh, the more the abrasive comes off, you can see it in my hands here, it's a combination of steel and abrasive grit that. So this actually works finer. So you might start with a 320 grit, as I've done, but if you keep using the same piece of paper, it'll eventually end up to a lot, lot smoother. Uh, also, the steel. Uh, if you're in the UK and you want a little bit of flat steel, this is something I do in my day job. Uh, so you can contact me uh, via my website, uh, myretrowatches.com. Email me if you want a piece of steel. I'm sure I can do you a deal on that all day long. Uh, so I'm going to continue again. We'll try and get rid of these scratches. And I'll come back and show you in just a few moments. Okay, here we are 10 minutes later. And again, it's really difficult to get it on film. But you can kind of see that that's already got a nice brush finish. Um... It still needs a bit more improvement, but we'll do that towards the end. Uh, what I was going to say at this point as well is it's it, when you come to do the finishing part, it's all right doing it roughly to take the scratches out. But when you want to do the the last bit to make sure the lines, if you're doing the lines, are all nice and equal, make sure that you pass it over here nice and slow and try and keep it as straight as you can because that will determine how good the grain looks. Again, very hard to see on this. You can see it just there. You know, if, you, if it's, you're doing it at an angle, these will all be at an angle, it won't look right at all. So, I'm gonna call that okay at the moment. You can see how to do it. If you wanna attempt that for yourself at any point in time, it's relatively easy. Uh, what to do with the sides. Now the sides, uh, obviously they need polishing. And we could go ahead and polish these straight away and they'd come up really nice. Uh, but they might not necessarily get out all of the scratches. Uh, so the way to try and 
uh, prevent that or, or improve it is really just by hand. So if you're using the, the sticks, which I probably wouldn't recommend on a case like this, um, but all I'm going to do is start with something like a 400 grit paper. I'm going to tear a bit off. I'm going to fold it up and I'm literally going to hand you know you might think oh my god what am I doing but it has to look rough to get the, the right end results so I'll, what I'll do now is I'll sand down this one side so we'll just take this one side as an example I'll take it down for a few grits uh, along with this top piece and then once I've done that uh, I'll use some scotch bright I'll show you that so the finish that that gives it the idea is is obviously the finer and finer grade the better smoother finish you get when you start getting onto the hand pads you can get it even even smoother and then it makes the polishing uh, a lot quicker and easier because with the polishing you want to try and retain the edges so like any job it's all about the preparation the more prep you do the better uh, a case like this typically uh, is going to take me i don't know two three hours possibly maybe less depending on how deep or bad the scratches are to get out that is that is to do the top the sides and the polishing up i must say so i will now go away and i'll just take all of this down through 400 uh, 600 800 I've then got 1200 and 1500. I'll get it down somewhere like that and uh, come back and show you. And this is it uh, after just having 400 grit. So it still looks pretty rough, but I managed to get under a lot of the, the dents and the dings and the scratches. So it's now just trying to really improve all this. And to be fair, Getting under the scratches is not the the hard part. It's it's actually buffing it all the way back now. That is. So stay tuned. I'll keep going and show you after I've done a few more grits. Okay, I am now at the stage where I've got up to 800 grit. So I've just basically gone 400, 600 and 800. Um, on these two parts for probably no more than half an hour and I've been using uh, so at one stage I was going that way and now I've done circles towards the end the next part that I would use is some of the I'm just looking for it some of this um, ultra fine uh, hand pad and I literally just cut a little bit off with a pair of scissors and I'm going to try and do a bit of this on camera for you so quite literally this is just abrasive material it feels really coarse but it's actually very fine now if I just use that the camera's going to have a hard time trying to focus this I think As you can see that's just cutting that again but a bit finer now just to speed things up so you're not seeing the whole thing in real time I'm now going to use this uh, which is the uh, 1500 well 1200 to 1500 it acts as and you'll see what I mean. It's quite an interesting product because of it's being spongy. Uh, but if we just go over that bit again there. What you will see. Is it will start to come to a, a dull shine. So you can possibly just see that now. 
So again, if you do a lot, if I spend a bit more time on this, uh, I'll get all of this all nice with this material. Then there's just one more to do after that. And then I'll, as far as I'm concerned, if you're ready for polishing, then of course I've got to do that side. So I'll just go over this edge and this edge with the two materials and you'll catch me in just a few seconds with uh, how that looks at the end. So here we go again. So after using the this type of scotch pie and this type of sponge, um, it's come up. On the camera it looks quite shiny but it's still got a bit to go. Uh, certainly when we come to polish it but you can kind of get the picture now uh, it's all about preparation the polishing it's the last operation and it's just to give it a shine really and that way you don't lose any of the lines that you are trying to save i've seen many attempts at um, restoring watch cases where the lines have gone in actual fact this watch that i'm wearing i'll take it off this is actually not mine it's a customer's uh, this was a typical example um, it somebody had tried to put this brush finish on the top and the whole thing was worn so the the edges around the crystal here were all rounded where they'd obviously had the case in its in in the hand like this and they'd dug in round here it was really awful what a shame to do something to such a nice watch um so the devil is always going to be in the detail you take your time uh plenty of prep doing a lot of things by hand really does help and like i say you can see now that that is coming up quite shiny um as i say the last one i will use is this because it's the finest stuff i've got which is about three thousand grit i think or just over that and again, a small piece. Uh, where possible, guys, I will be putting some affiliate links to Amazon where you can buy a lot of this product. I'm not sure about this one yet. If I, I'll have to see if I can find it or this one. If I can't find it, don't worry. You can contact me. I'm sure we can come to some sort of arrangement. So, um, again, I'll do a little bit of this on camera. You probably won't notice it. But this, because it's the finest I've got, will bring it even brighter. And not quite right at the moment. So rather than keep showing you all these stages, it's, you know, a bit monotonous. You kind of get the picture. I'll repeat onto this side. And then the next part of the video, which you're going to see in an instant, but for me, it might be a day or two, <laughs> uh, will be the polishing. So I'll show you exactly what I do to finish the last bit. And then we're done. Then we just need to case the watch, uh, regulate the watch, and then I can think about giving it away to one of you lucky winners. So over to the polishing. Okay, so a couple of seconds for you is uh, 24 hours. For me and I've now hand finished that to that sort of bright finish that you can see there so far so now all we're going to do is uh, the polishing side of things and first of all I'm going to try and mask it up with the uh, thermo tape and um, the idea is here is I'm going to mask this top area uh, and then I will probably mask this area too um, and that way you try and regain that uh, sharp edge. But I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Uh, so first of all, I'll mask it up and then we'll get all the polishing stuff out and I'll show you what I use. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, I've masked the case off and I've just exposed these two pieces for now. And if you're gonna use a machine Either the same one as this uh, or something very similar. Always check out the end. Uh, this one's really, this is the, the bit that holds the little collets in. And ours, uh, this one on here is knurled basically. And if you do slip, the knurling hits the case, marks the case, you've got to start all over again. So I've just put some tape around this. Now then, things to use. 
I've tended to find that uh, with polishing, it's all about using the right compounds. And the compounds I've got here are from a company called Menzerna. And I've bought them from a website called The Polishing Shop here in the UK, polishingshop.co.uk. Um, so you can go there and buy it. I haven't been able to find any affiliate links for this stuff, unfortunately. So otherwise, I'd have it uh, listed uh, below in the comment section. Uh, however, we've got four different types of compound. Ignore the wheels that you can see because the wheels are just for my machine, which I'm not demonstrating today. Although I have demonstrated the machine, if you are remotely interested in the Seco Diver uh, case restoration uh, thread, which I'll leave a uh, card on the top of the screen, which should be coming on any time now. That you can have a look at and check out that video if you want to. Uh, but basically, we've got this particular compound here. And I'm trying to see if you can focus it. So it's saying here that it's grey in colour. Well, we could have told you that. But what we're looking for is right down in this small letters here. We've got cut factor 8, gloss factor 3. So obviously that means it's going to cut more than it's going to gloss. Uh, so we're going to go down the scale, basically. So the next one I've got is this green one. As you can see, there's the coding. It's green. And we've got cut factor 7, gloss factor 5. Uh, then we go to a blue. And the blue is cut factor 4, gloss factor 8. And then the final one is this pink one, uh, which is cut factor 1, gloss factor 9. So basically that's for really for the very last pass. Uh, and coupled with that, you need to use the right um, attachment. And so if we're only going to use the hand tool, um, the best thing to use to start with is uh, these are in English at least are called felt bobs. And you can buy these on eBay from China for little money. Once again, I've got a link on my affiliate page um, for a whole set of these. Uh, so they're not a lot of money at all. Well worth buying. They come with a little arbor like this, which has got a thread on it. So you basically just thread these on there's a little center hole and we're going to thread it on like so and they do last for a little while uh, the the thing is not to cross contaminate so use if you're going to use this one for the gray only use this one for the gray put it back in the packet or wherever you want to keep it you can obviously reuse the the mandrill uh, not a problem at all for that so for the first two because you're trying to cut more than anything else you want to use felt felt is quite hard and quite abrasive in its own right. The uh, so the green, sorry, you'd use felt also. For the blue, it's then a cotton bob. Unfortunately, I've only got this one left. Uh, these are they're like um, well, I'll show you what they're like. So you buy small versions. If I can get it out like this. It's all layers of cotton. And that's basically what that one once was. And then for the very final one, this is a really, really fine uh, cotton bob. So those are all the, the attachments we're going to use and the compounds we're going to use. It sounds a lot, um, but you see the benefits of it, certainly by the time you've got to here. Again, it's just coming down the grades, increment by increment, and that way you do get a really good luster at the end of it. So we will start with the grey one and I'll show you what I do uh, with that. OK, so you can see here that I've uh, attacked this quite a bit over the time I've had it. One block of this will last you for probably years. I've got a new bob on the end of it. I'm probably going to be drowned out by the noise. I've got this on the lowest speed setting. Now it does make a bit of a mess. So we're just going to load that up. And then I'm going to try and do it whilst looking through the camera as well. So you'll be able to almost instantly see.
Okay, so you can see that that's starting to shine a little bit. I don't know how well it will come out on camera. There's still quite a bit to go at on this one. So I'm going to keep going with that one just for a few more minutes off camera. So I'll get it right and then we'll change over and go on to the next one. Okay, so this is what you're kind of left with now. Uh, the shine is starting to come on. It's still a little bit dull in places, but then that is the compound that's still doing more cutting than polishing. So we move on to the next one. And we basically just repeat exactly the same process. What you see with the green one here is it's more of a greasy sort of polish. Now I'm not pressing hard on this, just letting the speed of the wheel do the work and the compound do the work. And what I've also find good to do is to change direction. So we'll just wipe away that excess now. And again, it's still a bit greasy, as you can see. It's not actually scratches, it's just the nature of the compound. I'm just inspecting it myself. I've got a feeling the cloth is actually not very good. I think the, the cloth might have something else on it. So it's still looking a bit iffy, but I still think that that's just part of the... Uh, the compound to be honest with you I'm talking from experience there so we'll go on to the cotton and for the cotton I need to change my collet so just bear with me so this polish is now going to start to make it look bright And we'll wipe that away now you can certainly start seeing it's getting a lot brighter and then we'd go on to the pink one which is what I'm going to do now um, to try and keep the video a bit shorter as well I will end up going through all of this once again and doing it properly um, and spending more time because you want to spend plenty of time just trying to get that finished certainly on this top piece where you can see it you want to get that as good as you can possibly get it, which is quite easy to do, really. Just means spending a bit more time, uh, certainly under my visor. Incidentally, I would re recommend wearing uh, eye protection. Uh, you don't want any of this stuff flying in your eyes. Uh, I tend to use uh, my OptiVisor so that I can get close up and see exactly what's going on. Anyway, we'll just go over with the cotton. And then I need to change the collet yet again. Okay, as you can tell, I've not rehearsed this uh, video in any way, shape or form. Okay. 
Right. So you can kind of see it shining. It does need a clean as well. And I do, like I say, I will go over that better. And then if we, if I try and remove some of this tape, you can kind of now see we've gone from that to that. Um, I know it doesn't come across very well on the camera, guys. It's difficult to try and film this. Um, so I'll just continue, I'll do the whole thing, and then we'll come back and have a look at it once it's done. Right then, well I've been at it for about half an hour or so, and I've successfully brought everything back. Uh, what we need to do now is give it a good wash, uh, because it's covered in all the same stuff that my fingers is covered in. Uh, take the tape off, might need to reapply the brush in, and then that will be it. So I will show you that as it's completed form and then it's a case of just putting the watch in the case uh, testing it and then it'll be ready for the giveaway okay so the next bit you'll see is this uh, all cleaned up and looking finished seconds later it's all finished so we've uh, I've washed it cleaned it uh, as you can try and see the, the contrast between the brushed and the uh, polished um, it does look better in the real and certainly in uh, better lighting than my garage where we are now uh, I don't want to keep this video any longer than it has to be I will now recase uh, the movement I will sorry the whole watch itself put the crystal in I'll make a short video in a few days time and that's when we'll start the competition opening for the lucky winner of this watch so if you've got this far again thank you very much really do appreciate you watching um, if you like the video please give me a thumbs up and if you want to see more please subscribe and don't forget to click the bell button so you get alerts as and when i post new content i'll see you in the next one guys thank you